great release. So upon initially approaching a trap, um, we park the vehicles at the road. Usually about three of us will go in initially. And so we're going to try to creep in. And then at some point, if there's a deer in the trap, either it, I'm going to spot it or I'm going to hear it rattle the trap. And at this point, it's all about getting there as quickly as possible. I'm going to stand to the side and what we're trying to do is guide the deer towards the back of the trap, um, towards basically a corner where it can be easily contained. And then we can collapse the trap and monitor its legs as it goes down and have the deer safely restrained. If we determine that it's a female that could possibly be pregnant, at this point we're going to have the hand injection of sedative and then just try to take a few moments to keep it restrained, keep its eyes covered and step back and be as quiet as possible. And this one looks to be, judging by your body size, probably an adult, which means that about 99% of the time they're going to be pregnant. Once we have the deer out of the trap and onto the workup zone, and the first thing that we're going to do is to check the temperature because this is our um, highest priority and something that we can actually regulate. As far as data collection goes, um, the first things that we want to take basic condition measurements such as blood and determine if the deer is pregnant. The pregnancy we check using a portable ultrasound and so somebody will shave an area on the skin just above the uterus and um, put on some ultrasound gel that will help us get a better image. You can usually determine pregnancy in a matter of a minute. The fawn developing, so you can't really tell too much what's what at this point. Sometimes you can get a little glimpse of a rib cage, but you can see the these little masses in here. Hmm. It's a little guy. So if we determine that a doe is pregnant, we have a large interest in finding her fawn later in the springtime, and then we can subsequently radio collar this fawn and track its survival and movements along with her. In order to do this, we use a vaginal implant transmitter, or VIT as we refer to them, and we place this in the birth canal during the workup, and it's gonna be expelled with the fawn during partrition in the springtime. And using this method, we can go to the exact site of the fawn's birth and recover the fawn. So this is a VHF collar that's gonna give us a signal that we can follow throughout the year. And this will let us see a lot of things such as her seasonal movements, her habitat selection throughout the year, and of course, her actual fate. It's a pretty useful tool for wildlife scientists. Woo, 125. One, One dab. Is that it? That's it. She's just a little lady. Weight is a pretty useful piece of information, I think, biological information on any animal that you capture in any study. Calibrate this. We, um... The drugs that we give these does to oh, sedate yeah. them, some of them start to really wear off after about 45 minutes. And at this point, we're going to start to see some movement in the legs. And now we know that it's time to give them the reversal. Typically, the head and front end of the body will begin to recover a lot faster than the rear legs. And so our main concern at this point is to keep the doe contained until we really feel some movement in her rear legs. Once we start to feel some real pressure coming from those back legs, it's time to just take off the head cover and get out of the way. Oh, great release. Generally, any time that I see a doe take off from a workup looking good to go and completely lucid and mobile, um, that's a good day. And so if they run me over a little bit on the way out, I'm okay with that.